This is Courage Barbell. I'm your host, Chad Ikes. Today, I want to do a little talk on what do you do when everything goes to shit in your meat prep? I recently, or I currently have a client who is getting ready for a competition in a week and everything just kind of went to crap. And he's kind of worried about, he doesn't feel like his training went well and, and some other stuff. So that's basically what I want to talk about today a little bit, which is more about uh, mental meat prep and how to handle when everything kind of falls to shit. Let me start with the spiel, but let me first say I just got caught up with all the comments on YouTube. I know I got behind there for a while, so please don't feel like I didn't reply to you. It's just taking me a long time to get back to you. Um, I was really excited to get caught up and reply to everything everyone said. Man, I really appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the likes. Um, I appreciate you guys subscribing. That's all going to help me out and try to grow this, this organism I'm creating. Um, and, and the bigger that grows, the more time I have to get more footage out for you guys, get more knowledge out and help you guys out to achieve your goals and become as successful in lifting as you want to be. Uh, also, please run over to couragebarbell.com, pick up some apparel. Uh, it really helps out. Uh, we're trying to grow that. I'm, I'm working on some training pants and some more hats and, and a lot of new stuff. We, we did get some stickers up on there. I think they're four, four or five bucks for a sticker. I, I still want to do like a package deal of three or four stickers. Uh, so, I mean, even if you only got four or five bucks, and, but you want to help out the channel, order some stickers and we'll get them, we'll get them sent out to you. Um, please follow my Instagram, which is just Chad Ikes. I eventually will start a Courage Barbell and I think I have a Courage Barbell TikTok started as well, which I'm still learning that whole weird TikTok thing. Anyway, so I have a client who's get him and his son are getting ready for a meet. Uh, as of right now, they have about a week before the meet. This last week, he his work got really, really busy. Um, he had these conferences. He had guests at his house. Just complete chaos. And so for this week before the meet, which is coming up, and the two weeks before the meet, he didn't get all the training in that he wanted. He tried to hit the main lifts the best he could. And then uh, his son actually is sick with um, some sort of flu right now. So he's worried about how he's going to do. He's worried about how his son's going to do. He's a little stressed out about the fact that two weeks before the meet didn't go like he wanted it to go. And, you know, he's kind of questioning what he should do within this week right before the meet. And we got a chance to talk this morning, and I thought, hey, this is actually some pretty good information that I should probably try to share with everyone out there that's watching and anyone that you guys know, share the channel. Um, if you have somebody going through this, share the channel, let them see it, see what, what I'm talking about, what we're thinking. One of the big things I, I notice about people, about lifters competing and going into meets, for some reason... It seems like people are really worried about a few weeks before the meet. Like they really want to train heavy right before the meet. Like 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 in one or two weeks they're going to gain this super massive strength that's going to show up in the meet. And strength is about attrition. It does not come fast. It takes a long 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 time to build. It takes a long long time to get seriously strong. So I don't understand this obsession of like, oh, I got to train. I got to get these great sessions in right before the meet. You're not going to gain hardly any strength in the last two or three weeks coming into the meet. But what can happen and what often happens is you can't overtrain and you can completely destroy your strength for the meet. I can't tell you how many guys I've watched and listened to after the meet I can't believe I missed that. I did I did it last week. Like, yeah, you did it last week and your body's not recovered and you think you're going to do it again. And, you know, most of the most people, depending on how you train and what styles you train, you're trying to do this build up to peak for the meet. So you have this long 12, 16 week build up going into the meet. And then so so as you build up and you get stronger and stronger and stronger, you're you're taxing your body more and more and more. And so by the time you come close to the meet, 
you're, you're putting a lot of stress on your body. And if you're not seriously focused on your recovery, it's going to end up being too much. And it's not as important to go, hey, are all these sessions one or two weeks out perfect and are they great? That's not as important as going, hey, man, I really need to get focused on my recovery right now. We only got two to three weeks left. Like my main goal should be on recovery, not if I'm hitting these numbers or not. So when I talk to my client about that, I'm like, hey, don't worry about it. We're good, man. Like you, you got your training in. You still got some training in during all this chaos that you have going on. So you're good. Like, don't worry about it. Right now, with 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 the stress of your work and the stress of having guests in your house, and now your son being sick and, and, and worrying about him, like your body is already so stressed out and it's doing everything it can do to keep up right now. If you're going to add in this forced weight training because you think you have to get that weight training in, you're going to end up messing yourself up. Recovery is paramount. Recovery is always paramount, especially when you're going into a meet. After talking about this, I think he, I think he, I think he got the point and I think he was feeling much better. But one of the stories I told him, because I love telling stories, uh, one of the, when I kind of overloaded my system with my powerlifting and, and kind of spiraled myself down with my depression and my sleep and some other things, I started picking up doing Highland Games. Uh, in my brain, I was supposed to back off of lifting, kind of focus on Highland Games, which I hadn't really done much, and just kind of focus on my technique of throwing and everything, which which kind of helped, but I'm a seriously aggressive person. And before you know it, I was still lifting heavy and trying to throw. Anyway, I wanted to go down to, to do a Games in Vegas, and... I got sicker than shit. Like a week before the meet, I got real, it was not even a week before the meet, it was like four or five days before the meet, I started getting really sick. And I ended up having to drive all the way down to Vegas, which is about seven or eight hours with the flu. Uh, got in my hotel room like a day or two before the meet. And just, man, I wasn't eating. I, I was just in bed, but I, I couldn't sleep for shit because I just felt like crap. And... I was like, man, I paid for the meat. I paid for the hotel. Like, I'm doing it no matter what. And so I went in. I completely didn't really have any expectations of what I was going to do because I'm sick. I'm like, I'm going to do the best I can do. We're going to see what happens. Even with all that happening, I actually ended up having one of the best Highland games I ever had. I came in that day. I actually woke up and felt really good. Felt rested. Everything went really smooth. Uh, Mike Wiskowski, I think is his last name, I can't remember, was one of the pros. And he, he actually went through and helped coach me through that whole day. And, man, everything, it was one of my best Highland Games competitions ever. Um, I've, had, I've had meets where, like, training and everything, everything, nothing went like I wanted it to. But I made sure to focus on my recovery, like focus on my recovery, man. And you, ha- you always have that. We're always fighting, no matter how, how positive – people say they are or how positive you think they are everyone has doubts so me included I mean there's competitions where I went in man and I'm like god you know I focused on my recovery especially that last week but the training didn't go like I wanted I didn't hit my openers easy as I wanted I didn't you know the training didn't go as well I, I didn't feel as strong as I thought I would but I focused on recovery and I get to the meet Man, shit feels light. You get under that first squat and you're like, oh yeah, today's going to be a good day, man. Like, screw the training wasn't so great. So don't get all wrapped up in the idea of having all these perfect training sessions. If you look back, I mean, if, 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 if you ask me, hey, Chad, like how, what percentage of your training throughout your whole powerlifting career was awesome? There's probably more... Bad days in are good days because you're always kind of pushing the limit in training. You know, you're trying to find that balance between how how far can I go without getting overtrained, and inevitably you're always bouncing back and forth. So there's always bad. There's you're always going to have some bad sessions. The thing is to know that that's a bad section and know you need to back off and switch your focus to recovery. And if you come into the meet two or three weeks out. You should be thinking, okay, it's not about, I should have already hit my opener. 
I should already have an idea of what I want to hit at the meet. Like these last couple weeks are just kind of tying up loose ends. Is my mobility good? Is my flexibility good? You know, do I need to hit these weaknesses a little bit? Is there a couple technique things I need to focus on? You know, but am I getting my sleep? Am I getting my nutrition in? Am I, am I working on my flexibility? I want to come in absolutely 100%. And not when I feel 100%, not what I think is 100%, but real 100% ready to go. And that's only going to happen if you focus on your recovery. So I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap all this up in, in, a, in, a, in a nice short three quote thing, which isn't going to happen. All of your hard training and all of your strength gains are long term. They happen over a very long period of time. You're not all of a sudden go, hey, I'm going to peak these last three weeks and put 50 pounds on my bench. It's not going to happen. You're not ever going to gain that much strength in two or three weeks. The strength that you did have, and if you look back over your careers, you're going to look back like I did. And, I, and I've ran all the numbers, and, I, and I've talked about this quite a bit. You know, 10 years to put on 1,000 pounds on my total. That's a long time. It happens a little bit at a time. Stop focusing on trying to gain strength in these last few weeks. And focus on, hey, can I be, a, how do I be 100%? And everybody's like, well, I got to lift heavy. I got to do this. I got to do that. Man, your central nervous system is going to stay used to, to that weight over a couple peri- over a couple of weeks. It's not a problem. And, you're, and it's not like you're going to be not lifting completely. Except that last week, like with my client, I go, you know what? I think, like, don't do anything. Like, just take a week off. Catch up on your work. Spend time with your family. Chill out. If you feel good, maybe do some light sled dragging. Try to stretch if you can. I go, but just chill out, man. Let your brain relax. Let your body relax. Let it heal up from all the hard work you put in. And you're going to come into that meet and you're going to feel good. So stop thinking that you're going to gain all this great strength in the last few weeks and start thinking about, can I be 100%? What, not what do I have to do to get my absolute peak to hit this meet? Think about what do I have to, how much do I have to recover to be absolute 100% at that meet? Because if you work on that recovery and you come in at 100%, you're going to nail the numbers that you do. I mean, part of the peak for a meet, is it's not this huge miracle peak peak strength thing it's coming in a hundred percent like think about all the time in your training you're always training consistently and, and you're and you're going and you're going and you're going but we don't really ever fully recover during training and that's fine we want to recover as much as we can we want to recover a lot we don't need to be absolutely fully recovered so when you're throughout all your training you're never going to be fully 100 percent recovered at a meet, you should be fully 100% recovered. That's the, that's the thing to, to peak in. Peak in your recovery. That's kind of where I've been trying to get right there. So we, I know we all get our minds stuck in a certain way of thinking. And in, in strength sports, it's so easy to get stuck in this meathead mentality. But we need to get ourselves out of that. The best lifters in the world that I've ever known are intelligent planned out, methodical, and they know what they're doing. It's not. It's just some guessing game. It's not just a bunch of numbers written down on a piece of paper. They understand that it's more than just the gym. They understand that it's up here and it's in here. That's what, that, that is really important. So, man, don't freak out about the shit. You know, we're, we're power lifters. We're not professional athletes. It cracks me up that they, they, I was called a professional. I'm like, I never made a full living at this sport. So to me, that's not a professional. But that's another story. Uh, okay. So I lost my train of thought, guys. So when you're looking at this, look at your recovery. Look at the big picture. Think about peaking. I want to peak my recovery for the competition. I want to be an absolute 100%. I'm not going to get stronger over a couple of weeks. We're not professional athletes. Now I know where I'm going again. 
So things are going to happen. Things are going to be chaotic. You're going to have life. You're going to have your kids. You're going to have work. You're going to have any number of things that can happen coming into this meet. And it's never going to be perfect. You're never going to have the absolute perfect. Every single thing is right. And perfection is not that great anyway. So just just, just roll with it. Go, okay, hey, things didn't happen. Um, I'm stressed out. Maybe I'm feeling sick. Maybe my allergies are bad, whatever. Like, okay, so it's okay to back off my training a little bit. Let's just hit the main movements today and not do any accessory stuff. Like, don't freak out that you're not getting your training in. Go, okay, what's important is the recovery. Are you going to be recovered? And even if you go, okay, man, you know, work stressful or my kid's sick, I've been up all night. Okay, well then adjust your training. Go, hey, I only have a couple weeks left. So I know I'm not going to get stronger, but I was up all night with my son or daughter or whatever. I didn't get the sleep that I need. So let's kind of back down in the gym today and just kind of get things moving and flowing because it's about recovery. It's not about this peak of strength. It's about the peak of the recovery for the competition. <sighs> okay, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. Please like the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Please comment on the channel. Uh, as you can see, this man, this stuff's just flowing out of my head. I have tons of topics I want to do. I have tons more videos I want to do. So help me out. Uh, support the support Courage Barbell the store. Get yourself some stuff. Uh, please like and comment this channel. You know, please subscribe. Please share the channel. Please follow my Instagram. And I will see you guys later because I'm out.